think we're recording. Welcome, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Getting to Know Your Center Owners. I'm with Brooke Atwood today in Modesto, California. And um, she and I have become amazing friends. And uh, she's an amazing person. I think if you go to see her, you are going to be very impressed and just love her. So I will let Brooke introduce herself. Hi, Gail. <laughs> Hi, everybody. So um, my background was actually psychology and then education. And then I, um, well, I'll talk about how I found the egg a little bit later, I'm assuming. So um, where do I even start? I don't like to talk about myself. So <laughs> please so do. I, People want to know you. <laughs> <laughs> so um I grew up kind of chasing the psychology dream and trying to help people in that manner because that was kind of just what fell in my lap as a child and being, you know, the family therapist and the one that helped everybody. And, and so in that realm of helping everybody and getting my um, master's degree in counseling psychology in San Francisco, I ended up uh, running a center, <clears throat> excuse me, being a program coordinator and helping troubled youth, basically, and suicidal teens. Um, and so from there... I, it was, it's a really rough job. Social work is, you know, number one burnout, of course, um, because your wheels are just always spinning and you constantly feel like you can't help enough and you can't do enough. And that all goes home with you and it weighs on you and it weighs on your family. And so that got to be a lot. And I wanted to pursue my PhD. And um, so I started looking at education more so and helping children in that manner or being able to help people on the front end of it instead of the back end of it. And so I ended up in education and getting my uh, teaching credential and I started teaching little ones, first and second graders, and I had a blast. So I did that for about seven years. Um, but last year, I uh, decided to kind of at the same time that I was teaching, start the, the center that I have now, and I've built that up over the last year. So um, to back up a few years, my son was actually diagnosed with um, lymphoma, and that was June 18th of 2018, and he was 15. So I had never been touched by cancer in my life, or my family, or anybody around me. I, there was one step grandpa when I was little, and you know it was just never really talked about, and there was never really anything discussed. So. Um, that was, it just never was like a forethought of, you know, wow, what happened or anything like that. It just wasn't talked about. And so when my son got diagnosed, it was the fourth person I had found out about between my husband and I's family, uh, in five days. So within five days, we found out about four people having cancer, including my son and my world just kind of got rocked. So I started researching and going down every rabbit hole I possibly could and doing everything I could to help my son to get him through. You know, of course, we got into the whirlwind of biopsy and surgery and getting a port put in the day after, even though we didn't even have a diagnosis yet. And, you know, all of that craziness. So we were in the whirlwind of cancer and um, I knew there were better options. I knew there was more. I knew there was more we could do. Uh, but like I said, I had never been touched by cancer. So I just went into overdrive and educating myself and helping my son and getting him on supplements immediately. And he went through two full cycles of conventional care and was supposed to do, that was six weeks. He was supposed to do another nine weeks of chemo um, and four weeks of radiation. And that was the FDA approved path for him. Uh, him so amazing. And researching and educating yourself. And I think you're even on forums where you're helping other people to help their uh, family members. I mean, you yeah. have just become such a, um, an educated resource for this. And I'm just so proud of you because I think really, um, I guess I, this might be wrong to say, but I think you've saved your son. Yeah. Well, let's hope. <laughs> yeah. As it, uh, don't make me cry, Gail. Uh, as it, <laughs> As it uh, stands right now, he's possibly cancer-free totally. Uh, with lymphoma, it's a little tricky because you can't just do a blood marker. You can't look at a tumor. You can't do a quick, you know, oh, we're fine. You know, uh, it's a full-on, very toxic and nasty PET CT that he has to have where, you know, toxicity is running through him for an hour and his brain and everything. And he's very foggy afterwards for a few months. And it's just, it's horrible. So we're not getting that done until next year. Right. Um, but as it sits now, he only has one one lymph node that ha that is enlarged and it's not even, we don't even know if it's cancer, it could just be inflamed. So yeah. that's it, that's all he's got left, right? I've totally met him. He's an amazing 
little soul or big soul because he's big but he's just so adorable yeah he's almost 18 now <laughs> wow wow Crazy. so i'm trying not to cry too so <laughs> let's, let's move on okay so right we got, how did the egg find you then so the egg uh, well i well we found each other how about that <laughs> So when I was in one of my rabbit holes, um, searching away, my son was um, getting weird readings on his PET CTs. And so there would be, you know, where things went away, but there was like this really minute, like a millimeter or two of new growth, right? And then three or four months later, we went for the next one and the same exact thing happened. And I was thinking, he's not, he's not fully something's going on. Um, I reached out to you even, and you said there's, he's hanging on to something. And I said, exactly. He's hanging on to something and I got to get him to let it go. So the only thing I could think of, and that was of course, after the egg, when I talked to you, but before that, the only thing I think of is he won't talk. Like I, I, I got to get him to get, there's another door that needs to be opened. Right. And so of course it hit me energy therapy, letting go of things, let it go. Right. So I started searching energy things in our area and there was little to nothing. I mean, nothing. And so I was going, this, this isn't going to work. And so I signed him up for whatever I could, got appointments for him in a couple of different areas, a shaman session, an energy uh, healer. There was, there was only like two or three things I could find. I got him into all of them. He was already doing acupuncture. He had just finally started counseling. So I was getting him in, you know, those wheels turning and he was opening the door a little bit and he was allowing these things to occur. And as I'm searching through these things, the egg pops up on my computer and I went, oh my God, I have to have the egg. And I went, I don't even know what this is. I have to have it. Like it literally was this, that message, it's yours. And I went, huh? <laughs> and so it was kind of divine intervention. I'm sure you've heard this many times, Gail. Times. <laughs> <laughs> and it, my mother-in-law actually put it very well because my husband was having a hard time wrapping his brain around the fact that I had gotten this lovely egg and never asked him about it. <laughs> And so my mother-in-law said, well, it sounds like almost like a pastor, like it was a calling. And I said, thank you. That's exactly what it was like. I, I didn't think about it at the time. I just knew I had to have it. I wrote to you. I immediately was like, put me on the list. I haven't talked to anybody about it. I don't care. I need the egg. Mm -hmm. um, and so I even got him started in Castro Valley at their egg. Love them. Um, got them, him started over there. We did nine sessions with them before I got my own last October and then, I mean, we are faithfully in this girl every seven to 10 days. My son, me, my daughter, everybody. So, so and your mother-in-law, she, she travels to come see you and then she gets, gets in the egg. Yeah, she does when she's here. Yeah. She loves it. Yeah. She loves now, it. I mean, yes, I hear the story all the time. People are, you know, some people don't even come to try it and which is always amazing to me. It's like, why would you buy something with such a huge investment and you haven't even tried it? And they'll tell me, oh no, I just know. I don't, you know, I, I don't need to try it. I know. And so I don't know what's attracting people to, but they tell me, you know, it's in my cells now. It's in my heart now. I have to have it. And um, like such a huge blessing for me. I wasn't going to try it. The only reason I did was because I was taking Aiden. Yeah, totally. Yeah. I wasn't worried about trying it. I wanted, I had to have the egg. It was it literally was just my little mission. Yeah. <laughs> it's, a, it's a big mission. Right. About growing your space. So you're going to be yes. moving to a bigger space. That's amazing. Yeah. And so we, we'll, we'll ask, we'll tell people, or we'll tell you, ask you to tell people how to find you <laughs> at the end. Easy sure. for me to say. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. So, so do you have a couple of stories maybe you want to share? Yeah, I have a few, even just like super recent in the last week. Um, of course, as you know, there's lots of great stories and lots of great things that happen to everybody when they get in the egg. Everybody's story is so unique that I love hearing them. And so, you know, sometimes somebody will come out the first session and go, I didn't feel anything. I'm like, it's okay. It's okay. You know, and you know, you explain all of that. And it's not a miracle pill. It's, you know, starts from within. Uh, but then you get somebody in there that's like a shaman and they're like, yeah, there was a seance going on with me. And I'm like, awesome. So there's just all these great stories, right? So I love them every day. Uh, but I, I do have one that just, she showed up last Saturday. She didn't even have an appointment. <laughs> she just showed up because she had such great news that she was so excited about it. And she came in and she goes, well, I'm an egg success story. And I said, you are? I said, what happened? Tell me. And she said, well, I went to the doctor a couple of days ago. And she goes, you know how I was supposed to start kidney dialysis? And I said, yeah. And she goes, my levels are high enough now that I don't have to do it. She was like, and you know, it's all because of the egg. <laughs> 
<laughs> and I laughed and I said, that's awesome. And she goes, I haven't changed anything else. My diet was already, you already know everything. She was not change anything else. And the doctor was like, I don't even know why. <laughs> well, you know, the story in the book, the first story in the book about TQ and you know, his whole kidney uh, things. And yep. He called me the other night. I mean, he calls me all the time and he's like, you saved my life. You saved my life. I'm like, I am not God. I did not save your life. You yeah. saved your own life. Um, yeah. But that's a kidney story. I have another kidney story. I, I guess the, the egg loves to work on the kidneys. It's so right. Fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, and then I have, um, I've had quite a few recently with like either brain trauma or, or starting dementia. Um, and so and I had reached out to the doctor too that we get silver from just for some kind of detox protocol as well, which was really cool because he's so giving and kind. Yeah. Um, so I have another one that just recently, well, actually just a few days ago, she told me she's been coming. I think she's had seven, eight, seven or eight egg sessions now. And we do a couple of other therapies here too that um, we learned in Aiden's experience and his path of getting better and healing that helped him and was very successful for him and helps a lot of others with disease cells and cancer cells. And so she's been doing one of those also. It's a hyperthermia. Um, and so it raises your body temperature really quickly and it kind of like kills off, you know, extenuating cells and, and things and detoxes, right? Mm -hmm. So something like brain trauma where there's a lot of detoxing going on, she's doing both that and the egg um, because she was starting to get really bad signs of like dementia. She was losing her memory. She wasn't able to focus. She wasn't able to do any of her side jobs anymore. She was doing, I mean, she just really, her husband was coming in with her to listen to even what I needed to say because she couldn't remember things. Um, and so just a couple of days ago, she was laying there doing hyperthermia and she was um, had, about to do the egg after that. And she said, you know, I just want to share with you that my husband's even getting irritated because now I remember everything he's doing. Oh. And I said, that's awesome. And she goes, I go to the doctor in a few days, but I already know I'm laser focused. I remember numbers and everything now again. She goes, I'm not foggy anymore. She's like, I can completely focus on my work and get it done, like complete it and not have to worry about it later. And she goes, my stress is less. Like I'm not worrying about, you know, taking notes or having my husband with me or, you know, and she said, it's awesome. She goes, I, it's, I can think clearly again. And I was like, that's awesome. So well, some of the hyperthermia or cryo, you know, uh, therapies are great, but I feel like it does throw you into fight or flight because it's freezing like that. So what a great compliment that you're doing to go ahead and put them in the egg and rebalance that autonomic nervous system. Yeah. And so, you know, you got to find the right combination for the different people because there is no one size fits all. So yeah, that's, that's amazing. I'm so impressed. Yeah, I love it. That's, I just love the stories. It's ridiculous. I have another really great person. She's actually going to be here in probably 20 minutes. Um, <laughs> and she, uh, once again, another kind of like brain traumatic uh, injury that happened to her. She was flat in bed for like six years and her husband right by her side, they both do the egg and they love it. And she goes, I'm alive. She's like, I love it. So everybody keeps telling me, what are you doing? <laughs> she's like, I keep telling them all about you and the harmonic egg. And she's like, I love it. So yeah, I just. Um, like TBIs, like the traumatic brain injuries. Have you found, cause I know in, in Denver, the ones that I have seen, the sound has to be lower. Have you found that with her too? Or has, have you been able to increase her sound? I, so I usually leave it pretty low for anybody with brain trauma on purpose because I don't want it or PTSD. I start off, you know, lower than higher, obviously. And if they say anything to me, then, you know, I'll turn it up a little bit, but I don't even tell them what I'm doing. I just listen and I make sure it's low enough that it's not a traumatizing, you know, but of yeah. course all of the tracks are so relaxing and calming anyways that we don't truly have to worry about that, but you don't want anybody to, obviously, you know, that you don't want the volume to be too high and have it be like jarring or anything. You just want them to be able to relax and go into that deep theta state. So yeah, and then yeah, they I try to keep it. we tell people too, there's the doorbell, you know, in the side yeah. pocket of the chair. So if they were to ring you, I had one guy that was in for Crohn's disease one time and he didn't tell me he had a TBI, you know, um, I had it on probably medium low sound, which is very low, but you know, it's relaxing. And, but for the TBIs, a lot of times I've noticed that they have a more acute, um, like sense of sound where, you know, something that would be loud um, to me might, or something that would be not loud to me would be loud to them. Yeah. yeah. And see, I like mine louder. <laughs> yeah. I know you do. I remember that. I don't, I don't. Yeah. So that's awesome. But yeah, we, um, 
Yeah, we've had that. That's amazing. So, oh my gosh, yeah. what a blessing. I can't get enough of the, I love the stories. I love them. Love them. And I love it when people come out and just kind of chill out in the lobby and then they hang out and they talk to me for a few minutes because I'm like, yeah. so how was it? And then I get to hear all these great stories. I yeah. love it. That's awesome. So, awesome. It just feeds the soul. <laughs> it absolutely does. Absolutely. So I know you have a client coming in soon. So how can people find you? So our website is www.allaboutmeonline.org. So all about me, our whole motto is helping heal you first so you can help others. And that's why we have the all about me name. So it's allaboutmeonline.org. And then um, the best number to reach me at if you had questions or needed to make an appointment if you didn't want to do the online scheduling would be 209-595-0109. Cool. And we are going to be moving in just about a month to a bigger location and adding more therapy modalities and eventually another A. And, <laughs> and that will just be downtown Modesto. So we're not moving very far. <laughs> yeah. And uh, Tony and Daryl are manufacturers. They're amazing. Um, they're there to support you. They're going to come and move your egg. So yeah, um, yeah that'll Happy be Christmas. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Super cool. Super cool. And of course, your um, website information, just like everybody else's is on our harmonicegg.com website with all the under locations tabs. So yep. Well, thank you for your time. I appreciate it. So good to see you again. Thank you. Miss you. Miss you too. I love talking to you. Happy healing, everyone. Yep. Thank you.